Hare Krishna, welcome to the lockdown program with Krishna under the umbrella of Govardhan Hill. Today we are reading and discussing the most beautiful Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay, Varshana Mataji, you want to start a little bit of a kirtan, Jaya Radha Madhava, while we're waiting for others to join us. Okay. Anyway, welcome, <coughs> Varshana Mataji, uh, Dharm, Rashmi, and Kanta Mataji. Hare Krishna. Jai Radha Madhava. Jai Kunj Bihari, Jai Radha Madhava, Jai Kunj Bihari, Gopi Jana Vala Bhava, Giri Vardhari, Jai Radha Madhava, Jai Kunj Bihari Gopi Jana Vala Bhava Giri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Yamana Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai, thank you. Hare Krishna. <coughs> there, <coughs> sorry. There was uh, uh, some times where the sound seems to be going away. In, I think it has something to do with your microphone, how close you are, or maybe you moved around, I don't know. Yes. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. So that is uh, all for the moment. That is uh, welcome, Varshana Mataji, Dharm, Rashmi and Kanta Mataji. So, uh, I have a little bit something to read, which is quite interesting. Uh, normally, when I pick some quotes, I don't stay, stray very much away from Srila Prabhupada. But here I found a very nice quote from Yogananda. And I thought that was worthwhile of sharing. So, quote, Don't depend on death. To liberate you from your imperfections. You are exactly the same after death as you were before. Nothing changes. You only give up the body. If you are a thief or a liar or a cheater before death, you don't become an angel merely by dying. If such were possible, then let us all go and jump in the ocean now 
and become angels at once. <laughs> Whatever you have made of yourself thus far, you will, so will you be hereafter. And when you reincarnate, you will bring that same nature with you. To change, you have to make an effort. This world is a place to do it. Hare Krishna, I thought it was quite nice to remind us uh, that uh, this is a practice place, this world, to change ourselves, to improve ourselves, to work on our imperfections and become perfect. And uh, we take everything what we have worked on or rather not worked on will take that into our next birth exactly so better to work very hard on ourselves improve ourselves and achieve perfection in this very lifetime and then after death it will be glorious so that was a little quote. Uh, I have here, I spoke earlier on uh, about yoga. And the th sixth chapter is, of course, the yoga chapter. Uh, and sometimes people think, uh, we practice this yoga or that yoga, but actually yoga is not possible in this age. It's too complicated. It's too nobody is able to practice proper yoga. Let's say hatha yoga. And let's read, let's read that quote from Srila Prabhupada on yoga a little bit to make this clear. A devotee is asking Srila Prabhupada, can hatha yoga hinder? or help Krishna consciousness, or is it Prabhupada? Hinder. Yes, because it is useless, simply wasting time. You cannot perform Hatha Yoga in this age. You do not follow the rules and regulations. You are simply bluffed. Do you know what is the rules and regulations of Hatha Yoga factually? Devotee. Not actually, Prabhupada. Yes, you have to select a secluded place. Hatha yoga is not practiced in an assembly of so many men. Just you go to a hatha yoga class. Of course, that is very, very uh, fashionable to go to yoga classes. There are hundreds of members practicing and he is collecting money. Five dollars per seat. And you are thinking, I'm practicing. That is useless waste of time and money. Hatha yoga is not practiced in that way. You have to practice in a secluded place, alone. Do you do that? Devotee. Yes, not, no, I guess I don't. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada. It is very difficult in this age. Then you have to restrain yourself in so many things, complete from complete complete free from sex life. You have to eat under certain di directions. You have to, so many things there are. These rules are not followed. Simply, they have got some bodily gymnastic sitting posture. They are thinking, I'm practicing. No, that is one of the items. So all the items cannot be observed in this age. Therefore, it is wasting time. And Srila Prabhupada quotes, and that is also very significant. Uh, one may ask, why is St. Krishna explaining about yoga and so on? The answer could be given, Arjuna was proposing yoga earlier on. He said, uh, I'd rather go to the forest and meditate. So Krishna explained some yoga systems, uh, Ashtanga yoga, Dhyana yoga, this and this and that. And uh, Krishna, Srila Prabhupada said in a, in a conversation, 
Krishna, you will not find in Bhagavad Gita that Krishna is saying to Arjuna, now press your nose in that way and press your nose in that way and breathing in and breathing out. No, no way it is found in Bhagavad Gita. So, the sixth chapter is a yoga chapter and some people are much attached to the yoga chapter because they kind of say like yoga, the idea of yoga. Uh, at the conclusion of the sixth chapter, in fact, the last very verse of the sixth chapter, Krishna gives a conclusion. So here Srila Prabhupada gives a translation. It is, uh, yogis, he who always abides in me with great faith, worshipping me in transcendental loving service, is most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. This is the goal of yoga practice. So that is uh, from Bhagavad Gita 6, chapter 47, the last verse in this yoga chapter. So, abides in me, intimately united with me, and uh, engages in devotional service. So, that is devotional service, that is uh, Krishna consciousness. So, Srila Prabhupada continues. So, that is possibly very easy by this movement, Krishna consciousness, not by any other process. And the ultimate goal is here. One should be always abiding with God, worshipping Him, transcendental loving service, and intimately united with Him. Intimately. This intimate unity means that five kinds of relationships, and so on, Srila Prabhupada explains. That is the perfection of yoga. When Krishna has advised yoga practice, Sankhya Yoga, you have Bhagavad Gita, there is Sankhya Yoga, you will find in the 47th verse, this is a version. That's what we just was quoted. Devotee, there is no value in keeping the body fit through exercise, because yoga practice is also exercise for the body. Prabhupada, yes, you can become very healthy. But does it mean that health is a perfection of life? Do you mean to say healthy life will not die, will not change this body? So health is required, but health is not the ultimate goal of life. Ultimate goal of life is here. So, okay, that's enough. That was on a little bit on yoga and to remember, of course, is the whole yoga chapter ends in the last verse of the sixth chapter where Krishna says, Krishna consciousness and devotional service, that's the highest yoga. Prabhuji, just one quick question. Yes. Uh, why is Krishna telling Arjun in one of the verses about how to uh, concentrate the mind on in between the eyebrows? Uh, and that's a good question. So why is he explaining such detail when, to Arjun when actually he does not want Arjun to do what he is suggesting? And then Arjun even says later on that all this is not possible for me. Yes. So why is he taking the trouble to explain only all this? Yes, sometimes we have to explain something that the other party understands how not to do something, right? Arjuna got, I mean, Krishna explained the different yoga systems and Ashtanga yoga and so on. And Arjuna said, no, I cannot do that. Okay. That was all. That's why. That Arjuna could understand it's not that simple huh, to practice yoga in the forest. Don't do your duty. And Krishna gives so many arguments. Huh? You will be forced. Huh? Even if you uh, adopt uh, uh, the ways of a Brahmin, in the forest, you can't do it because it goes against your own nature, your kshatriya. So many arguments are given her. So by explaining all that, he's counteracting actually what Arjuna wanted to do, of going to the forest and meditate and not to fight. And after explaining the different yogas, and Arjuna understands that's too difficult. 
I can't do that. And then Krishna explains in the last verse of the, verse of the yoga chapter, Krishna is saying the highest yogi, which is devotional service, in loving uh, uh, attitude towards Krishna. And that is uh, 647. Uh, the translation goes, actually, it's a very famous verse, one of the 108 key verses, Yoginam Apisarvesham. And the translation goes like that. Of all yogis, the one with great faith, who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental loving service to me, he is the most intimately united with me in yoga, and is the highest of all. So, Krishna doesn't say the highest of all is the one who's pressing his nose and sitting in, in uh, yoga postures and this asana and that asana and ashtanga and this. No, that is uh, abiding in Krishna, thinking of Krishna within himself and renders transcendental loving service to me. Transcendental loving service is devotional service. Hearing, chanting, shravanam, kirtanam, vishnu, smaranam and so on. That is full Krishna consciousness. Prabhuji, what does uh, unite in that translation you just read? What does it mean? Krishna is saying that yogi unites in yoga with me. Means what? You, unite means not merging into Krishna for sure and certain. Unite means uh, practicing devotional service. No, in unite sense. in yoga. You read unite in yoga. Yes, it and means. yoga means... Uh, as explained in this verse, is devotional service. That's the highest yoga. How we unite in yoga with Krishna? By offering him loving devotional service. That's all. That is, that's a real uniting, connecting, uniting with Krishna means connecting with Krishna. How we connect? By offering transcendental loving service to him. By hearing about him, by glorifying him and so on. So no room for any impersonal understanding, unite, what else people can come up with, unite with Krishna, merging with Krishna or something. No, nothing of that sort. That's not supported by Krishna himself. Unite with Krishna means devotional service. That's the best, and Krishna says in that last verse, that's the best way, uniting with me in devotional service. Abiding. Okay. So I was hoping we get Ben or Pandava uh, tonight, but seemingly not. So let's move to Srimad Bhagavatam. It's already in the chat. Have you seen it in the chat? Is it available? Everybody knows how to get to the chat? Okay, I assume so. There it is, it's the text, uh, first canto, fifth chapter, text 25. No, I haven't got a chat area. Yes, there must be a chat. Click some screen and then the options coming up. There must be chat somewhere. There's mute, start video, share, participants and more. Maybe Click I on more, to... maybe under more. Yeah. Oh, yes, chat one. Okay. Oh. Right. Yes, we got it. Okay, everybody got the text. So let's ask Vaishnava Mataji, you want to read? Okay. Yes. Text 25. Yes. The microphone is yours. Yes, thank you, Haribo. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Uchista lepan anumodito dvijaya sakart sma bunje tad apasta kilbisaha evam pravastasya visudha chetasas tad dharma evatma ruchi prajayate. Translation Once only by their permission I took the remnants of their food and by so doing all my sins were at once eradicated. Thus being engaged, I became purified in heart, and at that time the very nature of the transcendentalist became attractive to me. 
Prabhupada by Srila Prabhupada. Pure devotion is as much infectious in a good sense as infectious diseases. A pure devotee is cleared from all kinds of sins. The personality of Godhead is the purest entity, and unless one is equally pure from the infection of material qualities, one cannot become a pure devotee of the Lord. The Bhakti Vedantas, as above mentioned, were pure devotees, and the boy became infected with their qualities of purity by their association and by eating once the remnants of the foodstuff taken by them. Such remnants may be taken even without permission of the pure devotees. There are sometimes pseudo devotees, and one should be very cautious about them. There are many things which hinder one from entering devotional service, but by the association of pure devotees, all these obstacles are removed. The neophyte devotee becomes practically enriched with the transcendental qualities of the pure devotee, which means attraction for the personality of Godhead's name, fame, qualities, pastimes, etc. Infection of the qualities of the pure devotee means to imbibe the taste of pure devotion always in the transcendental activities of the personality of Godhead. This transcendental taste at once makes all material things distasteful. Therefore, a pure devotee is not at all attracted by material activities. After the elimination of all sins or obstacles on the path of devotional service, one can become attracted, one can have steadiness, one can have perfect taste, one can have transcendental emotions, and at last one can be situated on the plane of loving service of the Lord. All these stages develop by the association of pure devotees, and that is the purport of this stanza. Jay. Thank you very much, Rashana Mandaji. Can you say a few words about it? A summary. What 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 is Srila Prabhupada talking here? And who is talking in the uh, looking at the translation, who is talking in the in the verse? Actually, I don't know that because um, I think I've missed a couple of maybe it was something in the previous verses which I've missed. But well, who had association and who ate the prasadam of these bhakti vedantas of these pure devotees? He's talking about the bhakti vedantas, um, but I don't know who they were. It's Narada Muni. Oh, right, Narad Muni. Okay. Because and he the, was there with his mother. We, uh -huh. We know the story, and that story will be related now. Huh? And uh, he, this Bhaktivedanta, this pure Vaishnavas. Huh? And last time, uh, Pandava Prabhu mentioned one of these, uh, that, that was Hamsa Avatar, actually. And I found a reference that's quite interesting. Uh, who says that uh, there is a reference in the Bhagavatam. It says, O Narada, that's in the seventh chapter of the second canto. O Narada, you were taught about the science of God and his transcendental loving service by the personality of Godhead in his incarnation of Hamsa Avatar. Hamsa is a swan incarnation. He was very much pleased with you due to your intense proportion of devotional service. He also explained unto you lucidly the full science of devotional service, which is especially understandable by persons who are who are soul surrendered unto Lord Vasudev, the personality of God. It's not a hundred percent clear uh, that these Bhaktivedantas were uh, actually Hamsa Avatar was there, but it points in this direction that what Pandava try to say last week. Okay, Vashana, continue. So what, what is what talking, talking about? about the transcendental qualities of a pure devotee and um, how the attraction can become attraction, but it has to be pure, a lot of purity to be able to have that. Um, it talks about obstacles on the way, um, about pseudo uh, devotees, um, which is uh, you have to be careful of. But basically, the um, 
main point of this is, is specifying that um, you have to be pure to be able to achieve uh, pure love. Um, so it talks about purity and, um, like I say, and about eating food stuff taken from pure devotees. Um, and that, there was this one sentence which is quite interesting about such remnants may be taken even without permission of the <laughs> pure devotees which is very interesting because I think there's a lot of people or very high level devotees who take prasadam from higher level devotees without their permission, which is very purifying, um, which I think we'd all like to do that if we've got a chance. <laughs> Thank um, you. Yes, yes, more, more, yes, carry and on. The, the, it's talking about the transcendental qualities of the pure devotee. Um, means uh make that you know you've, you've got to have those qualities and this is what once you start having the transcendental qualities then all the material things become distasteful that is a very good point yes once yeah. we have progressed uh, once we get the taste of the devotional service of the lord then uh, the material attractions losing their grip on us, mm. step and by also, step by and step. then all the stages that can be developed is by having association of the pure devotees. What, so what is Srila Prabhupada talking about here with these stages? Uh, one can become attracted, one can have steadiness, one can have perfect taste, one can have transcendental emotions, and, and that, at that last is, one can be situated on the plane of loving service to the Lord. What is Srila Prabhupada talking about? For total devotional service. No, no, he's God. talking about very specific, and we have mentioned that quite a number of times. Attraction, steadiness, yes. taste, transcendental emotions, and love of God. Yes. Anyone. Bhakti, really, isn't Anyone. it? Anyone. What is Srila Prabhupada talking about? Is it the stages of how we uh, progress slowly, slowly, starting from, is that what you're asking? Starting from? It starts with Shraddha. Yes, that's it. Adao Shraddha, Tata Sadhu Zango, Tata Bhajana Griya, and so yes. on. Uh, and then finally it stops at Bhava stage, which is pure love. Yes. Uh, it starts with Shraddha right with faith and then it comes uh, sadhu sangha association of devotees at attracted yes and uh, essentially robert writes about steadiness that's nishta perfect taste that's ru ruchi transcendental emotions that is bhava and uh, loving service to the lord that is prema krishna prema so these are the stages by association of pure devotees. Now that is very important. Basically, one could say he has said by that association of pure devotees and taking the prasad even once. Srila Prabhupada makes quite a point, even once, not necessary many, many times. But uh, it has to be pure devotees, and that is a very, very powerful uh, purification and attraction grows. So by association with uh, pure devotees, everything comes about. Anything else? Kantamata, she left, she said earlier on she can only stay for a little time. So we are four of us. So, anything else to that verse? We're hearing the story of Narada. If not, let's move on to the next verse. Uh, maybe, Rashmi, you can take on text 26. The microphone is yours. Text 26. Tatranvaham Krishna Katha Progyatam Anug 
अनुग्रहनाशनम मनोहरा तहश्रद्धाय मेनुपदम विश्रन्वता प्रियाश्रवसंग मामा भवद रुचि ही translation o vyasadev in that association and by the mercy of those great vedantis i could hear them describe the attracted activities of lord krishna and thus listening attentively my taste of hearing for the personality of god had increased at every step papat lord shri krishna absolute the absolute personality of godhead is attractive not only his personal features but also in his transcendental activities it is so because the absolute is absolute by his name fame form pastimes entourage paraphernalia etc the lord de- descends on this material world out of his causeless mercy and displays his various transcendental pastimes as a human being so that human beings attracted towards him become able to go back to godhead men are naturally apt to hear histories and narrations of various personalities performing mundane activities without knowing that by such association one simply wastes valuable time and also becomes addicted to the three qualities of mundane nature instead of wasting time one can get spiritual success by turning his attention to the transcendental pastimes of the lord by hearing the narration of the pastimes of the lord one contacts directly the personality of godhead and as explained before by hearing about the personality of godhead from within all accumulated sins are of the mundane creature are cleared thus being cleared of sins the hearer gradually becomes liberated from mundane association and becomes attracted to the features of the lord narad muni has just explained this by his personal experience the whole idea is that simply by hearing about the lord's pastimes one can become one of the associates of the lord narad muni has eternal life unlimited knowledge and unfathomed bliss and he can travel all over the material and spiritual worlds without restriction one can attain to this highest platform perfection of life simply by attentive hearing of the transcendental pastimes of the lord from the right sources as narad heard them from the pure devotees bhakti vedantas in his previous life this process of hearing in the association of the devotees is specially recommended in this age of quarrel kali thank you say a few words about it please uh, so this verse um, narad muni is giving the importance of shravanam and uh, he is saying that to hear attentively so attentive hearing is stressed on here and hearing from the right source so he heard it from the bhakti vedantas so similar to him if we also hear from the bhakti vedantas uh, attentively we will do shravan then we will become attracted towards all the features of the lord all the various features his form his qualities his pastimes everything just like uh when we hear about you know somebody who is very wealthy or very beautiful we become attracted towards them so similarly when we will hear like this about the lord we will ultimately become attracted uh, towards him yes that's all that's all prabhu ji yes thank you very much very nicely summarized it all is going by attraction and uh, that's what we doing here and that is hopefully we all feel and i do think so attracted to shrimad bhagavatam which is not different from krishna himself so we are all feeling increasing attraction to uh, lord krishna himself in his form of shrimad bhagavatam and as we mentioned before uh, this first canto is revealing the lotus feet of the lord this shrimad bhagavatam is the transcendental form of the lord so we wouldn't come together here if we wouldn't feel some attraction so that has to increase and hearing from the bhakti vedantas well from the pure devotees we hearing from ac bhakti vedantas swami shri prabhupada so 
all these conditions are met and we are extremely fortunate that we actually have this ability to hear in uh, the same way as Narada had heard from those Vaishnavas, pure Vaishnavas. So that we could say that is a reason why Vyasadev tells his stories, his history, uh, with, and this exchange with Narada Muni. Because what was true for Narada Muni is also true for us. So Narada Muni achieved success just by hearing, by taking prasada from the right source, hearing, and uh, imbibing the same qualities uh, of this pure devotees, uh, so association of pure devotees. So this is helping us to follow in his footsteps. So that helps us. Any questions, comments, or shall we go to the next verse? You're going to hear that whole story now. That is 27. Okay, I'll take that on. 27. Dasmim stada lapta rujer mahamate priyashra vasyak ashkalita madir mama yayam etad zad asad sva mayaya pashye mai brahmani kalpitam pare. Translation. O oh, great sage, as soon as I got a taste of the personality of Godhead, my attention to hear of the Lord was unflinching. And as my taste developed, I could realize that it was only in my ignorance that I had accepted gross and subtle coverings. For both the Lord and I are transcendental. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Ignorance in material existence is compared to darkness. And in all Vedic literatures, the personality of Godhead is compared to the sun. Whenever there is light, there cannot be darkness. Hearing of the Lord's pastimes is itself transcendental association with the Lord because there is no difference between the Lord and his transcendental pastimes. To become associated with the supreme light is to dissipate all ignorance. By ignorance only the conditioned soul wrongly thinks that both he and the Lord are products of material nature. But in fact the personality of Godhead and the living beings are transcendental and they are nothing and they have nothing to do with material nature. When ignorance is removed and it is perfectly realized that there is nothing existing without the personality of God, the nations is removed. Think, since the gross and subtle bodies are emanations from the personality of Godhead, the knowledge of light permits one to engage both of them in the service of the Lord. The gross body should be engaged in acts of rendering service to the Lord, as in bringing water, cleansing the temple, or making obeisances, etc. The path of archana, or worship the Lord in the temple, involves engaging one's gross body in the service of the Lord. Similarly, the subtle mind should be engaged in hearing the transcendental pastimes of the Lord, thinking about th thinking about them chanting his name, etc. All such activities are transcendental. None of the gross or subtle senses should otherwise be engaged. Such realization of transcendental activities is made possible by many, many years of apprenticeship in devotional service. But simply attraction of love for the personality of Godhead 
as it was developed by Narada Muni, by hearing his highly by hearing is highly effective. A very interesting purport. Srila Prabhupada makes a point here. Uh, many, many years of apprenticeship. That's interesting. Many, many years. So we should not think it is not possible to achieve that. It's just too long a process, too many, many, many years. Uh, there is a story, we talked about it before, where Srila Prabhupada said to his young disciples when he came to America, uh, you are all young men. The where the word is where in the twenties or something like that. You are at least expected to live another forty years. And then he said, fifty years is more than enough to become fully perfect, to become fully Krishna conscious. So that's an interesting comment. So it is not happening in a week or two. By now, I think we know that. It will take some time in our progressive Krishna consciousness. But of course, it depends also if we keep the fire of Krishna consciousness, if we keep the chanting and the association of devotees burning. That's a fire. We have given that example of making ghee. The ghee the so butter will melt. <coughs> but the fire has to be constantly applied. If we think it will not work, making ghee it takes too long and we turn the flame off, then it, it will not, we will never have ghee. So the fire needs to be kept going. And then the impurities coming up more and more, and we take them away and it, the ghee becomes, the butter becomes clearer and clearer and clearer until there is only pure ghee left with no impurities. And even then, we take that ghee and put it through a cloth because at the bottom are also impurities. At the bottom, the heavy impurities, the salts and these kind of things that settle at the bottom. And the water content of the butter that comes to the top and we just take it off and put it aside. So, it takes a bit of time, but the point is we need to keep the flame burning. And that flame burning is our regulated sadhana, our regulated chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra at a minimum number, a fixed number of rounds. A fixed number, that is very important. We're fixing it. Otherwise, we are at the mercy of our mind. Today, the mind is feeling like, and tomorrow, it doesn't. So, but we want to exactly come to the point of not being at the mercy of our mind. And in this point, it comes also in how important it is to surrender to a, a bona fide spiritual master. Surrendering, I just was thinking today, surrendering to a spiritual master means accepting anything what the guru is saying. We may not be able to execute everything perfectly at a particular moment in time, but we can accept it as truth. At least, if we, if we think that might be true and that might be not, and I heard something else somewhere else, and that is Srila Prabhupada's opinion, that, that is no anywhere close to surrendering. Surrendering means accepting everything and anything of the words of Guru. So once we do that, then there is, that's a surrendering process, accepting fully huh? things we never have heard before, when we well, he hear it the first time, we'll accept it. And not because it goes contrary to our belief or our way of thinking. No, we accept. Once we have surrendered, like Arjuna, 
Once he had surrendered to Krishna in the second chapter, Karpanya Dosha Bahata Asva Pahaba. Now I'm, I'm your disciple and the soul surrendered unto me. Please instruct me. So we reading the Srimad Bhagavatam and going sometimes back to Bhagavad Gita, we can say it's the same thing. Now I am your disciple. Please instruct me. So all these pages of the Bhagavatam, these are instructions. All these verses, all these shlokas, what we're hearing here, the story of Narada, these are instructions for us that we can mold our life in a similar way. And we are fortunate we have the Satu Sangha, we have the Association of Devotees, and we can uh, pose questions and we can discuss and we can hear realizations of other devotees, how they tackle a particular problem. So, anyone has any question? Question, questions. Vashana. Rashmi. Dharm, if you have any questions, you can post it in the chat. No, Prabhu, it's very clear. Very clear, right? Couldn't yeah. be clearer than that. <laughs> I said association. There, there, is a, uh, there is a saying, if you know of a pure devotee somewhere, you must seek his association. It's such a precious and valuable thing. How, how many pure devotees? They are rare. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Manushya Nam Zahasreshu, out of many thousands of men, and out of them, hardly anybody knows me. So out of many thousands of men, there are only a few who, who aspire for self-realization, and out of them, there is only a very few which actually know Krishna. So here we have Srila Prabhupada. Here we have some personality who knows Krishna, who is on the right side of Krishna, who is connected with Krishna all the time. All the Bhakti with under purpose has been dictated by Krishna. So we cannot have more connection with Krishna than that. So we take full advantage and we resolve within our heart and mind any instruction coming from Srila Prabhupada to us via Bhagavad Gita, via Srimad Bhagavatam, I will accept. And again, we may not able to execute all the destruction at, uh, uh, instruction at a particular time. Srila Prabhupada couldn't uh, execute his mission for many, many years. He was in the household, in the Grihastha Ashram. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said, you spread this Krishna consciousness all over the world. So what he was doing, he was meditating on those instructions for years and years and years. A lifetime in preparation. And when the time was ripe, then he was ready to spread Krishna consciousness according to the desires of his spiritual master and Lord Chaitanya all over the world. So, if we cannot follow a particular instruction, we don't discharge it. We don't say, oh, I cannot do it. Okay, end of story. No, we meditate on that instruction. I mean, we are all at various stages. The world is all at various stages of devotional service. Some uh, keep some of the principles, but not all the principles. And... Uh, we don't give up on that. There's really a devotee uh, uh, or someone who starts on the devotional path who immediately from day one on uh, he can, that also exists of course, all the principles. How? Hare Krishna Ben. No, he's not connected yet. So at least we meditate on this instruction. We don't leave it out of our mind and in due course of time Krishna will give us uh, the facilities where we can actually execute those instructions. Hare Krishna Ben, welcome. We missed you, but you are in the right place at the right time. 
Hare Krishna. We looking at Srimad Bhagavatam uh, text 27. We just discussing te- text 27, 1527, and we're moving on to 28 in a minute. And you're going to read that, I think, because we have all talked about. So, okay, is there anything else to 26? Rashmi, you said it's all clear. Vaishana, all clear? This association with pure devotees is so, so valuable. Extremely valuable. That can change our entire life for many, many, many lifetimes. It's not given to everybody to find this kind of association. And people may have the opportunity, but they don't have faith in this kind of association. And then they don't take advantage of that. There is uh, there is an interesting verse. Samashita ye bhada palavam mahat padam bunya yasho murare bhavam budi vatsa padam padam param padam 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 vipadam natesham. Very, very, very important verse. Translation goes as follows. For those who have accepted the boat of the lotus feet of the Lord, who is a shelter of the cosmic manifestation and is famous as Murari, the enemy of the Mura demon. The ocean of the material world is like the water contained in a calf's hoof print. Their goal is Parampadam, Vaikunta, the place where there are no material miseries, not the place where there is danger at every step. So, yes, we are circling since time immemorial to higher planetary systems, to lower planetary sometimes elevated, sometimes degraded. But now we have got a lifeline for the first time. For the first time, we got a lifeline of association of a pure devotee, of the Lord, and we said it is offered to us a facility to stop that endless cycle of sometimes up in the Svarga and sometimes down in the lower planetary systems. And there is a way out. Samsara. We know that song. Samsara Daba Nadalita Loka. So this Samsara, this endless wheel of in this material world, we can, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, we can overcome that. That's an immensely great opportunity we have, and we should take full advantage. Okay, let's move on. That is text 28. Ben, are you happy to take on text 28? I thought it was text 27, and I just prepared myself for it. Where are we? I thought it was text 27. Mm, uh, Yes, I just prepared myself. All right. Rashmi, where are we? Which is the next text? 27? 28. 28. All right. Sorry. That's okay. Okay, so microphone is all yours. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <coughs> ah, Shriman Bhagavatam, First Canto, Chapter 5, Text 28. Itam Sharat Prav Ritu Harer Vijre Navato Mi Nusavam Yasho Malam Sankirt Yamanam Munibir Mahatma Beer 
bhakti shra pravre pavrit atma rajas tamopaha translation thus during two seasons the rainy season and autumn i had the opportunity to hear these great soul sages constantly chant the unadulterated glories of lord hari as the flow of my devotional service began the coverings of the modes of passion and ignorance vanished purport by his divine grace as bhaktivedanta swami shri rupam transcendental loving service for the supreme lord is the natural inclination of every living being the instinct is dormant in everyone but due to the association of material nature the modes of passion and ignorance cover this from time immemorial if by the grace of the lord and the great soul devotees of the lord a living being becomes fortunate enough to associate with the unadulterated devotees of the lord and gets a chance to hear the unadulterated glories of the lord certainly the flow of devotional service takes place like the flow of a river as the river, river flows on till she reaches the sea similarly pure devotional service flows by the association of pure devotees till it reaches the ultimate goal namely transcendental love of god such a flow of devotional service cannot stop on the contrary it increases more and more without limitation the flow of devotional service is so potent that any onlooker also becomes liberated from the influence of the modes of passion and ignorance these two qualities of nature are thus removed and the living being is liberated being situated in his original position oh what a beautiful words can you say a few words about it so here is a this is the uh transfer uh, transformative uh, power um if you like uh of uh, pure devotees of the lord and uh the power of uh, pure service to the lord uh in terms of uh, uh glorifying the lord uh, particularly uh the devotees who are classed as unadulterated uh meaning that uh they have a single focus uh that is pure uh anything that becomes adulterated is impure but unadulterated means pure so this is a proper his um explaining to us the value of uh association with what such great souls who are engaged in pure devotional service to the lord is also uh, mentioning about uh, uh, the devotional service of the Lord through hearing the glorification of the Lord through by uh, um, by pure devotees as well and then he's making the point is made in the in the translation but also he's making the point again in the purport that uh, anyone who hears from such devotees they can be relieved from the influence of uh, the modes of uh, passion and ignorance and thus become situated in their original position okay beautiful thank you very much interesting here that such a flow of devotional service cannot stop actually devotional service by any material obstacles cannot stop devotional service we might think sometimes oh uh, please krishna don't take me away 
And that is a good thing to think like that. We can even pray, please, Krishna, don't, don't tempt me with anything. Don't, please don't take me away from devotional service and the association of devotees. But actually, that flow of devotional service can never stop. We may be temporarily taken away, but we will return to that devotional service. Like we have discussed many times, uh, unsuccessful practitioner may be taken away even in this lifetime. He comes back in next lifetime. Uh, on the contrary, Srila Prabhupada says, it increases more and more without limitation. So there seems to be no end to pure devotional service. Uh, to mind comes, uh, there is a verse, Ananda Buddhi Vartanam, an ever increasing ocean of transcendental bliss. Ever increasing. We don't have anything in this material world to compare. There is ever increasing, there is nothing ever increasing. It's everything has a beginning and an end. <clears throat> but pure devotional service is not like that, without any limitation. And interesting also, Srila Prabhupada writes, the onlooker also becomes liberated from the influence of modes of goodness, modes of passion and ignorance. When Lord Chaitanya was on his tour through South India, people, and he was constantly in ecstatic mood and chanting and dancing while walking on his tour in South India. Anyone who saw the Lord and his ecstatic expression also became ecstatic and started chanting and dancing. And anybody who saw those who saw the Lord, they were also infected. So this Krishna consciousness is very infectious. As in the last verse it was is saying, it's just like like an infectious disease. It's just it's even it's just like COVID, but in a good way. So so more pure we become in our own spiritual endeavors, so more infectious we become also. Just see, Srila Prabhupada. Uh, by his purity and his spiritual status, he has touched the whole world, basically. He has touched the whole world to set off a revolution of Krishna consciousness. It's a revolution that is, has started, that is keeping on rolling, and that keeps on gathering momentum. It will be more and more and more and more. We are just at 500 years into the golden era of 10,000 years of the golden age of Lord Chaitanya's uh, ecstasy. So, give it another 500 years. It doesn't need 2,000 years that Krishna consciousness is spread all over the world. It's already spread all over the world, albeit a little bit thin in some places. So, it will gather momentum, there's no question about it. And we will see uh, that beginning of that spiritual revolution in our own lifetime. We'll see, we already see, and that will be more and more. Because people have nowhere else to go, people have no hope anywhere else. And the material energy will press them very hard will press them very hard with pandemics, pandemics, that COVID is not the last pandemic, because we're encroaching so much on nature, the next pandemic is already in the pipeline. So material nature, the karma is ripe with pandemics and uh, climate problems and weather problems and so many pro political problems. So people will be pressed so hard that they really looking for, seriously, for an alternative. And here's the alternative of Krishna consciousness is there. So many books are out there. Krishna will do everything in due course of time. Okay, any questions or comments?
प्रभु जी आई हैव कमेंट चैतन्य महाप्रभु ऑल्सो गेव बाय हिज ओन एग्जाम्पल ही टॉट अस अबाउट अ हियरिंग यू नो यू सेड अबाउट दैट साउथ इंडिया टूर सो वेन ही वॉज इन दैट साउथ इंडिया टूर ही हर्ड सम some uh, transcendentalists uh, singing uh, 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 they were singing some songs and he sat and he heard the whole whole uh, what they were singing and this was what they were singing was bilva mangal thakur's krishna karnamrit it's mm. called krishna karnam karnamrit because it has krishna's uh, i don't know what it contains but uh, it, uh, the karnamrit means it was nectar to mahaprabhu's ears Ka- e- karn means ear and amrit is nectar so krishna Ka- karnamrit so bilva mangal thakur wrote this krishna karnamrit in south india and uh, he heard when Krish- uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu heard this he was so like, he stopped Uh, and he heard the whole he made those people who were singing it the transcendentalist recite the whole thing and so much so that he made uh, somebody one of his associates actually write the whole thing down and he brought with him this krishna karnamrit back to nilachal and uh, when so when he came his uh, associate said to him that uh, you know like how a father when he comes back Uh, from a, a tour or something he will ask oh, what have you got for me like that his associate said that you have been out of uh, you've been to south india for two years touring uh, so what have you got for us from there so uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu gave them this i have got you krishna karnamrit and apparently a copy of this is um, is still present this very copy of chaitanya mahaprabhu his personal copy of this krishna karnamrit is um is present i think uh, i heard it was in this uh, jagannath puri temple inside uh, one of the chambers something like that or maybe i've heard that wrong but it act, that actual manuscript is still there the one which he brought back from south india so even he was so much about hearing wonderful yes, yes thank you so much this translation is available uh um Krishna Kanamrita, right? Is it called? This translation is available as a booklet. I may even have it, or I have seen it, for sure. So that is available, and it's uh, yes. If you get hold of it, read it. It's great, wonderful. So fantastic. So. maybe before before we stop uh a bit more to the yoga i forgot to read that earlier on from uh, from a talk in boston very short little thing now this yoga practice shila brahma says was recommended to arjuna he said oh it is not possible for me it so it is not possible even 5000 years ago a person like achuna he refused oh it is not possible for me how ordinary man who has not practiced even controlling the senses or other things no it is not possible so yoga practice is accepted as a standard way of self realization that is all right provided it is sent percent probably executed 10% probably executed yes but that is not possible in this age nobody can do it so if anybody comes up with yoga and yoga practice and speaks about yoga they only speak about yoga and said don't practice it but it's not possible in this age rita brabha said nobody can do it anymore okay so what i have got else mm. okay here we here we stop and uh, i would like to someone reading we spoke recently about the 10 offenses uh 
I will post a link while I prepare the harmonium. While someone is reading that, that would be very nice. It is also here in the VEDA base. I'll put it in the... A little bit explanation about the offenses. We should always be uh, reminded what are the ten offenses. And here, the Bhagavatam is actually in the third canto, is explaining it very nicely. And recently we spoke about the great grandson of Krishna, Vajra, Vajrana. Uh, who installed all the deities. He was actually the son of Aniruddha. So, okay, Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, 15th chapter, text 25, the third paragraph. Let's see if we can get that done in the chat. Okay, here it is. Who wants to read that while I... Just move things around here a little bit for a bit more kirtan. Just click that link and it should get us to that third paragraph. Starts with, it may be noted. Not much to read, it may be noted. There are ten offenses we should avoid. What about Vajana? Mataji, can you read that? Hare Krishna. Are you there, Vaishana Mataji? Okay, if that doesn't work, Rashmi, what about you? Can you read that? Start, starting yes. with, it may be noted. I don't know how to get into the uh, chat. You click on more. And go to chat. Yes. Then a Veda base library came. Veda base will open offset verse and you just read the purpose. Particularly the third paragraph where it starts, it may be noted. You got that? Yeah. Just one minute. It may be noted, yes. Yes, so I <laughs> mute myself. While you're reading, I mute myself and... Uh, Get the harmonium out. Yes. Hare Krishna. Uh, it may be noted there are ten offenses we should avoid. Avoid the first offense is to de decry persons who try in their lives to broadcast the glories of the Lord. People must be educated in understanding the glories of the Supreme. Therefore, the devotees who engage in preaching the glories of the Lord are never to be decried. It is the greatest offense. Furthermore, holy name of Vishnu is the most auspicious name and his pastimes are also non-different from the holy name of the Lord. There are many foolish persons who say that one can chant Hare Krishna or chant the name of Kali or Durga or Shiva because they are all the same. If one thinks that the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the names and activities of the demigod are on the same level, or if one accepts the holy name of Vishnu to be a material sound vibration, that is also an offense. Third offense is to think the spiritual master who spreads the glories of the Lord as an ordinary human being. Fourth offense is to consider the Vedic literatures such as the Puranas, or other transcendentally revealed scriptures to be ordinary books of knowledge. Fifth offense is to think that devotees have been given artificial, have given artificial importance to the holy name of God. The actual fact is the Lord is non-different from his name. Highest realization of spiritual value is to chant the holy name of God as prescribed for the age. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. The sixth offense is to give some interpretation on the holy name of Lord. The seventh offense is to act sinfully on the strength of chanting the holy name of God. It is understood that one can be freed from all sinful reaction simply by chanting the holy name of God. But if one thinks that he is therefore at liberty to commit all kinds of sinful acts, that is a symptom of offense. 
Eighth offense is to equate the chanting of Hare Krishna with other spiritual activities such as meditation, austerity, austerity, penance, or sacrifice. They cannot be equated at any level. The ninth offense is to specifically glorify the importance of the holy name before persons who have no interest. Tenth offense is to be attached to the misconception of possessing something or to accept the body as oneself whilst executing the process of spiritual realization. Thank you. Any questions on that? If not, we're doing a bit of kirtan.
Hare Krishna. Let us offer our most respectful obeisances to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord, that just like desire trees and they can fulfill the desires of everyone, and they're full of compassion to the fallen and conditioned souls. Hare Krishna. So here we stop for tonight. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Anyone has any last things to say? Hare Krishna, everyone. Food for Life is going still on strong. It's going to be, I've changed it to Thursday evening now, Thursday afternoon. All right. Which will be going straight to the uh, Dawn House now. Okay, great. So it's better for me not to do the Saturday lunchtime. Jai, um, Hare Krishna. Yes, thank what you. What about uh, your... And tomorrow, sa- is, uh, and tomorrow is Nityananda Prabhu's big day? No, tomorrow is Advaita Charya's, Advaita Charya's appearance. One moment. Tomorrow is fasting till noon. Am I right or not? Fasting yes. till noon. It's not Nityananda tomorrow. I don't have that. It is. Hang fasting on. till noon. Sri Advaita Thursday. Charya's appearance. Um, I'm sure I... And then it's Bishmash to me. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's next week, 25th, actually. Yes, it's next oh, week. it's 25th. I'd been yes. looking at the... That's why I invited you <laughs> for tomorrow. But anyway... Okay. Um, okay. So, it's tomorrow, tomorrow is Sri Advaita Charya's appearance. Advaita Charya, very important personality. He called Lord Chaitanya down by offering Ganges water and Tulsi leaf to his telegram Sheila. So Advaita Charya, Mahavishnu, very important personality. Therefore, it says here, uh, fasting till noon. I'm yeah, and the next. Till, yes. And the next. <laughs> Sorry. One, one at a time, please. Mataji, you go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, the next day is Bishmash to me. Yes. Um, Bishma Pita's day. I don't know what that is, really. Can what, you find what? out? Let us know. Yes. What is okay. Bishmash to me? Anybody All knows? Right. Rashmi, you know what's Bishmash to me? Well, obviously to do with Mr. Oh, Mr. Bishma. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> what is Bishmash to me? Bishma, Bishma, that is clear. Who is Bishma? But what is Bishma? to me, Ashtami, eight days. What All is right. Bishma to me. I think it is his disappearance. The day he disappeared. Uh, that would make sense to me. Uh, my question was, Prabhuji, uh, isn't Advaita Charya incarnation of Shiva? Of Shiva. Oh. Yeah. No, no, no. No. Uh, it's, uh, no? it's Mahavishnu. Oh, Mahavishnu. So, who is which of the associate, uh, uh, or which of the Panchatattva is associ- is incarnation of Shiva? Nobody. I thought uh, Shiva was also uh, when Lord Chaitanya came down. All the when all, all the demigods came with yes, him. Yes, they're assisting came. in various ways, uh, and he's always dancing when Narada Muni plays his veena in ecstasy, but. Uh, He's no, not one of the associates. Gadada <laughs> Prabhu is uh, Radharani and Srivas, maybe Srivas Pandit, not Shiva. I have heard that, like all the, uh, uh, like all how the associates come down with Chetan, uh, with Krishna and with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah, they all Shri- come down uh, in, in uh, uh, various ways. Uh. All the demigods come down whenever Krishna appears. But uh, what role Shiva is playing? In Chaitanya's pastime, I don't know. There is a role for sure. I will find out. Yes, you, you find out. And uh, Vaishnava Madhiji, you find out what is Bishmash to me. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay. And Ben, what are you going to find out? <laughs> what, what, what would you like me to find out? <laughs> what would I like you to find out? I'll think about it and I'll text you. But I have some other point, uh, if that is agreeable to you. uh, Now the lockdown is still so intense and going on. What about if we had another session for the time being on a Monday? 
how would that work out with everybody else? It would be fine by me. I don't mind. I, me. I, I, could, uh, I, I could do every night, but <laughs> I just stick to what you guys want to do. <laughs> okay, so you and me, that makes already two who are all right with a Monday adding to our Wednesday and Saturday. What about you, Rashmi? Uh, uh, in March, it will be possible for me, Prabhuji. What? In March. It will Because be? I've got lots and lots of annual leave in March. Like, I'm just finishing off. So I will be at home from mid-March onwards, 12th of March. So oh, then March. definitely. Yeah. Or oh, not at the moment? Uh, at the moment, I will f struggle on a Monday. Is there any other... But day? I can... I can... Uh, Of a fri Friday. March evening. is a long time away. What about Sunday evening? What about Sunday evening, Ben? Uh, Sunday evening is uh, fine. Sunday evening is fine with me as well. And is, is that fine with you, Rashmi? Yeah, it's fine with me, Sunday evening. Varshana Mataji, what about Sunday evening? No, I'm normally speaking with the family. Um, Uh, I think I'm happy just with the two. I'm coping with that and with the food for life. That's quite getting a bit stronger. So, okay, we'll find out. Uh, Samir is not here. I didn't hear anything from him. Uh, and Pandava uh, and Bhagavati Mataji. We'll find out. Anyway, the idea is there to add another day. It doesn't need to be Monday or Sunday. We'll, we'll see. Okay, here we stop. Thank you very much, Vashana Mataji, Rashmi, Ben and Dharm. Dharm, when will you fix your microphone? And Rashmi, will you get a profile picture and Vashana Mataji as well? I will try. <laughs> Look how nice profile picture Ben has and Dharm has. So try to sort it for next time. Prabhuji, the problem is then if you put a profile picture, then any Zoom meeting you appear in, then that profile picture comes up, will come up. Yes. Do you have other Zoom meetings? Yes, hospital meetings are there on Zoom. Do you have professional uh, doctor's meetings? Yes, yes. So, how you appear in the doctor's meetings without any okay. picture? Yeah, yeah, no, nothing. I just leave it like how I'm with you, like that. Nobody has pictures in your professional meetings? No, nobody puts pictures. Nobody puts pictures or names or nothing. But mostly people keep their cam... A lot of people will keep their camera on. So... Yes, uh, uh, yes, yes, I know. Okay, so if that is an obstacle, then you just keep to what you have now, huh? Because otherwise it's complicated. You have to create a separate account uh, and then switch from one to another. That's not worth it just for a picture. Okay, here we stop. Thank you very much. See you on Saturday. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Paul. See you on Saturday. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hare Krishna. Hare Paul. Hare Paul. Yeah.